Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a thumb spike of cast. It's similar to a regular shore arm, but we're going to involve the thumb. But this one is important that we really immobilize the thumb really well and take away space and the thinner eminence around the base here. So let's talk about that. There's some injuries where there's a phalange fracture or a very bad ulnar collateral ligament sprain or a radial, what have you. It could be some tendon injury. It could be a metacarpal fracture. It could be actually a scaphoid fracture just below one of the other carpal bones, the trapezium. If it is a scaphoid fracture, that's when we really want to make sure that we have the position that the provider wanted. So we really want to ask the physician, what position do we want? Do we want the thumb up? Do we want the thumb farther out? Depending on the injury. So again, we're going to do an interosseous mold to limit supination and pronation. Perhaps they do have a scaphoid fracture. We really want to keep them from rotating so much. If we want to stop any supination or pronation, period, we need to actually not do a short arm. We need to uh, put it all the way and extend it out and make a long arm cast. So with that being said, we're going to stop the cast here. So let's, let's uh, cut our stockinette. And you can measure it in different ways if you want to. You can use some padding and just add on 50% of that length, meaning this is how far distal will go, and it will terminate at the antecubital space. And, and basically, if it's a really small person or a very tall person, we need to make sure we put it as far proximal as possible, but the cast does not dig all in the bicep when they bend 90 degrees. So here we go. Let's measure this. This is our measurement we're going to do. We're going to stop it at the tip of the thumb, OK? And then we're going to go to maybe one or two inches from the antecubital space. That is how long our stockinette will be. So we're going to add on just a little bit more just in case, just for we can envelope the cast neatly. So let's add a little piece for the thumb, maybe six inches or so more. And I'm using a one inch for the thumb. So I'll just roll this up. If they're in a really, really uh, acute situation where the injury is really, really tender, then you can put your hand through the stockinette and load the stockinette on for them that way. You can put your hand like this for me. And then what I'll do is cut a hole for the thumb. We want to make this hole a little bit smaller if we were doing a regular short arm because we want to take away any extra exposure of the thumb. So I'll pull that to the side, cut a little small hole. Now we have that ready. Let's add our one inch for the thumb. So what we're going to do next is just make a little slit. And the slit will go towards the index finger. So you notice I have a little bit hanging off just so we can envelope that little distal end of the thumb in. So let's add our padding. We're going to start at the wrist, go to the hand, and then quickly go up the thumb, and then take care of the rest going proximal. Now I'm going to go up the thumb and I'll start going in a little angle. And I want you to see this here. I'm going to hold the thumb so that I don't move the thumb or jerk the patient's hand around and it hurts them more. And do that again. Now what I want to do is just go through the web space again and then work my way proximal. As I go down the cylinder-like portion of the extremity, 
I want to do what we call that 50-50 coverage, but I also want to make sure that I have a little thicker edge at the base. Watching out for any shadows. This thin layers of padding that can cause pressure areas to form. You notice how I'm pulling off the padding delicately because in real life, the patients, you don't want any set movements too much. It hurts them. So let's add our cast tape now. Before we add our cast tape, we're gonna reposition the patient just in case they move. Um, so we wanna tell the patient, instruct them, we wanna make sure they're free from odor deviation because uh, their hand may start to drift down this way. Now you have choices, you can use a two inch or a three inch. Um, some people prefer the two inch, especially when they're going around the thumb. It's just a little bit easier to take away that little smaller, little diameter that you have to go around. So I'll just go ahead and soak the roll for at least two to three seconds. Get a lot of water in, inside of it. And just squeeze that off. And we apply the cast tape the same manner we did the padding. Start at the wrists, go through the web space, the tad, and then start taking care of that thumb. And then work our way proximal. Just cut in that web space. We don't have to worry about any edges like we had to worry about the short arm cast because we're going to take care of all of that thumb. So I went through the web space. Now I'm going directly on the thumb itself. And I'll cut a little bit here and hold on to this little point there and go around the thumb. Palpate it so you can know where the tip of the thumb is located. Do it again. So now what I'll do is go through the web space. And I want to have an angled look in the distal perma crease like we would do on a short arm cast. And then what I'll do next is just cover up any extra thinness areas in this little area of the thinner eminence. Go through that web space one more time. And now we're free to go all the way down. 50-50 coverage. Kind of keep the roll close like an inch from the extremity so you won't over pull it. And as I go back distal, I'm keeping my pull from being too much. And at the edge here, we want to unfold the extra leftover. Get in front of the patient so you can see what's going on here. So now what I'll do is I want to get that position. So I want to go ahead and make sure that I have enough extension. And then I want to start to contour this around the thumb. Take away all this space in this area by using the thinner eminence of your hand. All right, so next, we want to go ahead and take care of this thumb. And I left it long because sometimes you'll cut it too short and then you don't have enough to cover up the thumb. Okay. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the interosseous mold. The same mold you would do on a regular shoreham cast. So let's take this away just for a second. And I'm gonna laminate this area. And the reason why I'm doing this now is some providers like to wait before you put on your last roll so they can do the mold themselves. If you're doing this regularly, just go ahead and apply your other roll right away. So this is what I want you to see. I want you to see this from the lateral view. You can see that flattened appearance on the dorsal aspect and also the volar aspect. And then I want you to see how contoured this is around the patient's thumb. That's important. We don't want the patient doing like this inside of the cast. And then last but not least, we want to, you can relax your hand just a little bit. We want to take away all this space in here so you, what you want to do is just kind of line the fingers up, okay, so that the fingers are not squished, if you will. Now let's add our finishing roll. Now this is considered a cosmetic roll, but our goal is to also strengthen the cast itself for wear and tear. Now, as you do this proximal edge, try your best not to take away the padding edge that you made earlier. So you can see there's the padding edge and it's soft. So I'm gonna go through the web space. And then what I'll do is just take care of that thumb in just a second. Go all the way distal there, cut you a little quarter of an inch maybe, hold that piece, go around that thumb. Do it again. Now, let's go through that web space one more time. One little pearl that can be helpful is ending your cast tape where it's hanging down. So that way it can lay down a little bit easier. Now let's go ahead and laminate this cast. When you get done, you should have a well contoured cast and it should be contoured around that thumb really well. It should have the angled look on the palmer area, okay? And then at the range of motion here, just if you're doing the facts check, the patient, when they've been 90 degrees, the cast heart portion will not touch their biceps. A provider may want the cast longer or shorter, but you need to uh, get physician advisement for that. With that, that is our short arm cast that with the thumb is applied. Again, our position is going to be with the index finger in direct opposition, the wrist 20 to 30 degrees of extension. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.